So we're live. Um, welcome, everybody. It's Wednesday morning. Uh, we are the General Housing and Military Affairs Committee, and we are picking up work on S-237. Yesterday, we um, had a pretty much a conversation about what we think we can include in the bill and what we were able to um, leave aside for consideration for another day for next year in particular. Um, it was a conversation that um, I thought it was a fine conversation. It really just addressed the fact that at this time of year, um, while we try our best to get as much as we possibly can across the line, it was clear that there were elements of that bill that needed more work. So um, what we worked on yesterday was a slimmed down version. Um, it was, uh, we posted the new version of it, uh, the most recent version of it. Last night, Ellen finished work on it, adding the section on the covenants and um, broadening that language by taking away the reference to the sp uh, specific section that no longer exists in the bill. So, um, I, Ellen, if you could put that particular section up on the screen, just so that we may see it. Okay, so uh, good morning. This morning on your committee page under my name is draft 4.1 of the strike all amendment to S-237. <clears throat> and on page five, um, I added section four, <clears throat> which is the language regarding deed restrictions. <clears throat> so I made two changes based on uh, your conversation yesterday. So the first sentence now reads, deed restrictions, covenants, or similar binding agreements added after January 1, 2021, that prohibit or have the effect of prohibiting land development allowed under a municipality's bylaws shall not be valid. Um, and then the, the rest of the language isn't, um, hasn't been changed, but that uh, explains that the section doesn't apply to uh, restrictive easements such as conservation easements or historic preservation right easements um, or housing subsidy covenants um, held in whole or in part by VHFA or other eligible um, holders. So uh, yeah, so that's, and then the only other change in the bill is a small change of adding um, the House Natural Resources as a recipient of the report from DEC on TriPark. And that's on page six. And that language concerning, um, just to be clear, the, the language concerning um, the loans either to be either um, restructured or forgivable it is is right there as well. Yep, um, I didn't make any changes to that, but it's um, still in here. And then I just added down at the bottom, Natural Resources, Fish and Wildlife also as the committee that receives the report. Okay. All right, um, so open for discussion. Um, Representative Triano. I guess I have a question. I'm not sure how relevant it might be, but as a lister, I have been seeing um, uh, people of my generation who are putting their property in trust for their children. And I'm wondering if that has any impact on these uh, this covenant section at all, or if anyone knows, or if it is relevant. <laughs> property that would be in trust, um, still ownership by uh, you know, by recorded ownership uh, to the individual, but in trust in anticipation of leaving it to their children. Uh, I can speak from personal experience that uh -huh. all all uh, statutes concerning housing still are applicable to houses that are held in trust. Okay. Thank you. In including fair housing standards. Representative Hango. Thank you. Um, I don't have a question so much as a comment that um, this bill has changed so much 
Uh, and yesterday when you presented us with draft 3.1 that was slimmed down, I, I understood the, the need for several of the pieces of this bill, and I was encouraged to think that I would be able to support it. However, um, the 11th hour addition back in of section four regarding covenants causes me some concern. And I have not been able to speak to enough people to make an informed decision about this. Um, so at this moment, it remains one of those situations where I feel like this has gotten rushed through and I'm not comfortable with passing legislation at the last minute like this. So um, I probably likely will be um, not supporting this. Thank you. Uh, thank you for your point. As you're aware, this particular section has been in the bill since we received it from the Senate. So I don't feel like it's an 11th hour addition at all. Um, you know, it was a back and forth in, in the end of biennium on version. So um, we can agree to uh, interpret that differently. Sounds good, thank you. Um, any further questions on this bill? Representative Kalaki. Uh, well, I, I appreciate um, where this bill has landed and uh, from when we got it from the Senate, it's, it's had a lot, but I think it's, a, it's, it's in a really good place right now. And um, if you would entertain a motion, I would say that we should uh, move on voting on this bill. Certainly entertain a motion at any time in a second and continue the conversation until we're ready to vote. So um, if that's your pleasure, please feel free. Uh, yeah, I would make a motion that we vote on this bill. On, set, on version 4.1. Yes. Of S I'll second it. Oops, I'm sorry. You, you go right ahead, Tommy. I'll second it. All right. Um, just to be prepared, Mary Howard, are you... Um, do you have your pencil and your paper? Ron has a um, Ron has a sheet ready to go. So the process, as we've been doing it, um, the um, so we have a we have a motion and a second to accept version four point one. Uh, are there any further comments on this? All right, seeing none, um, the clerk may commence to call the roll. And I think, Mary, are you muted still? You're I'm muted. Yeah. Okay, I'm all set now. Just a second, let me get... Uh... Okay. Um... Representative Walls, you hear me? Sorry, unmute. Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Representative Gon Gonzalez. I certified this is Representative Deanna Gonzalez, and I vote yes. Representative Long. Yes. Representative Gamash. Sorry, no. Representative Troiano. Yes. Representative Howard votes yes. Representative Kalaki. Yes. Representative Zott. I certify this is Representative Zott and I vote yes. Representative Byron. Yes. Representative Hango. No. Representative Stevens. Yes. So the vote is nine to zero all right thank you everybody this was um this was a lot of work and i appreciate it i appreciate ellen for sticking with us all through it and um 
And for the folks that brought us the information, this was, this was quite a bit of testimony that we took in the final, in the final three weeks. And um, I appreciate everybody's efforts on this. It was uh, some hard and um, worthwhile conversations, but I think we have something that we can move forward here clearly and um, appreciate your vote on that. So Representative Howard, if you can work with um, Ron to get, mm -hmm. and Ellen, if you can work with Ron to get this version of the bill to the clerk, um, it has to be there before one o'clock, I think today, um, so that earlier okay. the better. Uh, um, who's the reporter, please? I am. You are? I am, yeah. So uh, what they asked for last time was once uh, Representative Howard certifies the vote, uh, that they'll want to hear from you as well. Do they need like a small uh, song an email, or an email a... certifying? I think a re representative Gonzalez sent last time was just an email certifying the draft and the vote. So it's draft four point one dated nine fifteen. Yeah. Okay. So I'll send you. I'll send you a clean copy, and then you can just you can forward it to the clerk. I can. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Yeah, thanks for your hard work, uh, Ellen. Appreciate it. Yes, thank you, Ellen. Good job. All right. Um, Representative Gonzalez is um, headed off for dental work. Um, so we will not see her until she returns, perhaps this afternoon, depending on how deep that dental work is. Um, we are going to be moving on to um, at nine o'clock. Damien is going to be here to to take us on a walkthrough. So so I see Joseph. I see Joe McNeil here. Joe, we're going to start at nine o'clock when our attorney gets here. So if you want to um, have a cup of coffee or do whatever you need to do before the before we start um, work on S two fifty four, feel free. Um, Thank, thanks a lot. Yeah, welcome. Um, just um oh damien is coming now but we're still gonna um just hi damien we're gonna have a preliminary conversation prior to um prior to starting though i'm beginning to see um other folks coming in so maybe we can start soon but i want to make sure all the witnesses who were invited are here before we start damien welcome back long time no see um i see you're good to see everyone I see you've had your post COVID haircut um, <laughs> easy when you cut your own hair so it's um but i just want to spend a few minutes i guess reviewing um did anybody have any thoughts about um the conversation that we had yesterday afternoon with the national guard um any anything thoughts about how that went and um what we were able to glean from it Hey, I'm, I'm interested in the, the clarification. I think it was John's question where the JAG was like, I'm going to have to get back to you on that. Was that do I remember that correctly? Uh, John, do you recall? Uh, yes, Matt. And then later on in the conversation, my, my question was about what is the role of the guard and do can they arrest people? Can they pick them up, put them in? Vans. Yeah. And they yeah. were like, we can't arrest, but we can transport, but we're not sure. Yeah. But but later on the conversation, they said, no, we would be able to transport, but we would not be moving people into vans. That still would be the line for the police is, is what I understood a, a clarification later in the conversation. Gotcha. And I, I guess while I've got the mic, um, I would be interested in, in, in what legislative council's interpretations were of the other two people who gave testimony as to what their interpretations were as to how our how Title 10 and everything kind of co-mingles with our existing laws. Because I'm not, I, I would just like to see what our in-house thinks about what our out-of-house testimony thought about these legal opinions. Sure, and that's something that we can share with Damien. Damien, you're still our National Guard person, right? Yes, I am, and uh, I'm starting to regret that I had to be in another meeting yesterday. <laughs> no, it's okay. actually it's actually okay. I mean, so we'll talk about it. I mean, we'll talk about it throughout, but just um, 
In particular, uh, one of the witnesses, Ed Stanek, provided a, uh, an eight-page letter that included some legislative sites, either through statute or the Constitution. And um, I think that's what Matt's are, uh, asking about. I also want to um, take a moment to, uh, if I think people heard last week, excuse me, that um, Matt and Representative Hango and Representative Sibelia have um, joined forces to to um, form a what they're calling a National Guard caucus, where I think issues like this can come up, um, where issues like this can be discussed outside of committee, um, you know, for for information gathering on these issues. Um, so if there's any folks that are interested, obviously, in participating in those conversations, they'll be set up through, um, I mean, two out of the three people are on our committee right now. So um, do you have a meeting set up yet? A first uh, we meeting? Have some, yeah, we have some scheduled. I have that in an email. Uh, Lisa, what was our next meeting scheduled? Is that like the 29th-ish? The next meeting is September 29th at 8 a.m., where General Knight is going to be giving us a briefing on what the Guard's mission is, who the people are in the Guard and leadership, um, and how we can support them throughout the deployment. The October 20th meeting, we're hoping to have Damien in to explain the intricacies of state versus federal um, law. And beyond that, we don't have an agenda yet, but we are taking suggestions. Okay. And when, so, when, when Matt and when I, Matt and Lisa talked to me about this earlier, is it, was it in September? I can't recall. Um, or the end of it, it was at the end of August. And um, I think it's a great idea to have a group of people try to help, you know, just to understand the differences that they're addressing here in some of these meetings already. And, and really, um, as, as, as I think we experienced last year when, especially for the new folks who, who hadn't experienced an election before of, a, of an adjutant general, it was a big learning process. And um, so to have more folks involved with learning about the, these nuances, I think is a great step forward. So I appreciate you guys doing that. Um, Representative Trail. And then Kalaki. Yeah, I, you know, after the whole thing was done yesterday, there seemed to be <clears throat> some ambiguity as to exactly how um, National Guard can be federalized. Um, there was not a total agreement, while there wasn't a total disagreement between um, Ed Stanek and, uh, and the general. So, uh, you know, it left me um, without um, any conclusions as to how this could happen. Um, I understand their concerns, which I've heard and read a fair amount about uh, from uh, November 4th to January 20th uh, being a, a, a possibly a critical time here um, in this country. So um, I think some clarification uh, maybe from Damien would be a good idea. Um, and um, I think if anyone else is left with the, some of the questions that I have in my mind, that, might, that would be a good thing to try and um, get this squared away um, before too much longer. And I'm sorry I missed the meeting uh, this week, um, Matt and Lisa. I was running around early in the morning. <laughs> I got a ton of stuff going on right now. Like, I don't even want to show you what my today to-do list looks like. I get it, man. Yep. Yeah. The, um, I, I think, Chip, to that ambiguity, I think that remains. Uh, absolutely. I think it's... Um, I think there's there's just a lot of questions and you know it's not as simple as a statute. I think one of the things that stood out in the conversation that, uh, when when uh, Mr. Stanick was relaying some of his work um, and Damien this will be something for for you to chew on later is under is helping us understand that you know in our constitution and perhaps you know remnants in our statute of the word militia um, and you know the the common use of the common use or the understanding of what the militia is or was and how it fits in. I mean that's a, it's a pretty. Um, I mean there are people who are very 
uh, attached to that word um, for other reasons. But when it comes to the National Guard, I think that there's there's a definite historic delineation between the two. I don't think a militia that existed in 1823 is the same as the National Guard as it was just constituted later on, and, and certainly as it's developed in the 20th century. But I think that's a there's time for that conversation um, and education. I, I, I can see the connection. Um, you know, my sister was a uh, was an appellate uh, court judge and uh, quite a constitutional expert, and we had had a number of uh, conversations about Second Amendment and uh, and such. You know, I, I think the interpretation when uh, when that uh, was written was that, uh, particularly in Vermont, uh, if you look at Vermont history, that uh, every uh, able-bodied man was expected to have a musket standing in the corner of his living room uh, to uh, protect Vermont from incursions from other states. And New York was the biggest violator of, of that uh, situation. So, you know, when the call to arms went out from the, the uh, Ethan Allen, uh, Ethan and Ira Allen, uh, think of them as you like, but, uh, you know, um, that was what was expected from most every able-bodied man um, in Vermont at that time when it was written. And so there is a connection, but it's kind of loose. <laughs> right. And there's, I mean, there isn't an organization that exists called the Vermont Guard, which yeah. is, which wants to be, I think, uh, more directly related to that militia idea. Um, anyway, that's not for today. Um, okay. That'll be for another day. Representative Kalaki. Uh, I just want to appreciate that our, our guard is so willing to, to meet with us. On, on this issue, uh, you know, it was great to hear from people. Last summer, I had the Chittenden County legislators and asked if the guard could meet with us about the F-35s because it is, uh, you know, very disruptive in, in Chittenden County for these planes to fly. And there's a lot of emotions. And they said, of course, and sat with 16 of us and fielded all our questions. And so I just, even if we may have differences sometimes, uh, I just think it's incredible that we can have open dialogue uh, with the leadership and they're there and they respond how they feel about things as well. And so I think it's really respectful and, and a model. So. Yeah, I hope so. I mean, I think we saw, you know, several years ago when the conversation was so heated in, in Chittenden County and in Burlington that um, th when things get antagonistic, um, when things get antagonistic, they don't progress. And so I hope that we can see that it's um, conversations like yesterday or more that happen more often um, when necessary.